Hello. I I'm just trying to fix my pants here. No, I think this, this patch is too small. You know, last week, this hole was tiny. It was no bigger than a periwinkle's pinky. And then I crawled under my desk looking for my pencil, and it got bigger. And then I put my pants in the washing machine, and it got bigger. And then I got it caught on my desk. And now look at it. You know, I bet if I'd taken care of this hole in the first place, it wouldn't have gotten this big. That reminds me an awful lot of what happened to Hank. Yeah, the time that his whistle got wheezy? Oh, <laughs> he wished he'd done something sooner, too. It was the day of the Big Harbor tugboat races, and Hank was so excited he couldn't sleep. The other tugs were all still snoring away, huddled together against the cold, wet morning. There's no use sitting around here waiting for everyone else to wake up, Hank said to himself. I may as well practice. I'm going to see how fast I can get to Bedford Bowie. Then, very softly, because he didn't want to wake everyone up, he whispered, Hodge your bark, get set, go. And off he raced. Hank was thrilled at how fast he was going. But Bedford Bowie wasn't. Bedford had been sleeping soundly. Then, next thing he knew, there was Hank hurtling toward him full speed ahead. Hi, Bedford, said Hank, stopping just in front of him. How are you this morning? Better than you by the sound of it, replied Bedford, who noticed that Hank was making some pretty strange noises. You're wheezing. Now, Hank wasn't worried. Oh, it's, it's nothing, he replied. Just the rain. Gotta get practicing again. Bedford wanted him to rest a minute until his whistle was better. But before he could say, and they're off, Hank was racing back to the great ocean dock. Well, by this time, the other tugs were just shaking to sleep from their stacks. Oh, I wonder where Hank is. Theodore yawned as he peered around the Grey Harbor morning. And then suddenly, there was Hank, barreling straight for the dock. Isn't it just like Hank to be up at the crack of dawn practicing? Theodore chuckled to himself. Ready to practice? Theodore didn't like the sound of the noise Hank was making. I think you should get your wheezy whistle checked, he said to his friend. Oh, I'm just excited about the race, said Hank. Well, within minutes, he and the other tugs all racing back to Bedford Bowie. And with all his hard work, Hank did very well. But while well, the other tugs cheered, Theodore couldn't help but notice that the race had made Hank's whistle even worse. It was still drizzly and cold by the time the morning work meeting started. The wet weather was hard on Hank's wheezy whistle, but he wasn't going to let that slow him down. He was too excited about the big race. Hank, said the dispatcher, I'd like you to help Theodore move the barges to get ready for the race. Yes, sir, Hank replied happily. The dispatcher noticed Hank's wheeze for the first time. And make sure you go to the repair dock sometime today to get that wheezy whistle checked, he added. On the way to work, Hank talked non-stop about the race. Do you think everyone's going to come? I wonder what the prizes are going to be. Theodore noticed that Hank wasn't keeping up. Hank, we can't stop and talk about the race now, said Theodore. We've got to get the barges moved. But the look on Hank's face told Theodore that he wasn't stopping to talk. He was stopping to catch his breath. Why don't you go to the repair dock now, instead of after work? Theodore asked. You're really slowing down. I, I can move the barges on my own. Oh, well. All right, replied Hank a little sadly. He didn't really want to go to the repair dock. 
He wanted to help get everything ready for the race. Maybe it was because he had finally slowed down, or maybe it was because the weather was clearing up. But as he got closer to the repair dock, Hank's wheezy whistle began to feel a lot better. Hmm, there's no more funny noises, thought Hank. You know, I don't think I really need to go in the repair dock after all. I'll just practice instead. Hank turned and headed off for the cove, where he could practice out of the way of the other boats. It took Theodore quite a bit longer to move all the barges himself, but he didn't mind. He thought that Hank had sounded awfully wheezy, and Theodore wanted to make sure he was fixed up in time for the race. And it wouldn't be long now before the race began. The barges were all in place. The starting line and the finish lines were set up. And everyone in the harbor was doing their part to get the last minute decorations up. The sun had even managed to break through the clouds. Fodak blew his whistle to get everyone's attention. Welcome, everyone, to the Big Harbor Tugboat Races, the dispatcher declared. Will all tugboats please take their places? The harbor was buzzing with excitement as everyone got in line. Theodore was beginning to get concerned. Hank should have been back from the repair dock a long time ago, he said to himself. Everyone ready? asked the dispatcher. Theodore kept searching the harbor for a sign of his friend. And then he got a funny feeling in his engine. I wonder if there's something wrong with Hank, he thought. On your mark, declared the dispatcher. Get set. Stop, shouted Theodore. Everyone was suddenly very quiet. All the boats turned and looked at Theodore in surprise. Uh, excuse me, Theodore said in his bravest voice. I'm sorry I stopped the race. But I'm concerned about Hank. He'd never miss the race. I think he's not feeling well. He was very wheezy today. The dispatcher looked at him in silence. For a moment, Theodore was afraid he was going to be angry. You're quite right, Theodore, said the dispatcher. For now, I'm going to call off the race. Well, everybody in the harbor floated still and silent. Tugboats, I'd like you all to go and look for Hank. Theodore headed off alone to the repair dock. He wanted Hank to be there. Maybe it's just taking a little longer than we thought to fix him up, he said to himself. But Hank was nowhere to be seen at the repair dock. Theodore felt that funny feeling in his engine again. Where is Hank? He wondered. He hadn't gone very far when he heard a familiar sound. It was louder than before, but it was definitely Hank's funny wheeze. For the race? Am I? Hank asked. Oh, no, Theodore replied. You've got plenty of time. I just thought I'd go to the repair dock first. Well, I was just thinking of going there myself, said Hank. Great, said Theodore, smiling. Do you mind if I practice my towing on the way? Oh, that sounds like fun, said Hank, thankfully. And with Theodore helping him to the repair dock, Hank sailed easily for the first time that day.
wasn't long before Hank's stack was unstuffed and his whistle washed. But to Hank, it seemed to take forever. He sure wasn't going to let that happen again. Next time, he promised Theodore, I won't wait until my whistle gets really wheezy before I go to the repair dock. Good idea, said Theodore, who was glad to hear that Hank was going to be more careful. Now, let's get back to the dock. Everyone's missed you. And with that, the two tugs sailed off to see their friends. All the tugs were really happy to have Hank back, looking <laughs> and sounding like his old self again. This is a very special occasion, said the dispatcher. So I would like to announce the official reopening of the Big Harbor tugboat races. The tugs all tooted their whistles in excitement. With Hank, of course, tooting the loudest of all. There is one thing, though, the dispatcher went on. Hank, I know you'd love to sail in the race, but today I think I have a better idea. Not sail in the race. Hank suddenly felt very heavy like he was pulling a giant barge full of cargo all by himself. He felt so sad that he almost didn't hear what the dispatcher said next. Instead, Hank, I would like you to do something very important. I'd like you to be the dispatcher and start the race for me. Me? Be you? I, I, I mean, the dispatcher be me? I, I mean, me? Me be the dispatcher? gasped Hank. In just a moment, Hank had gone from very sad to very happy. And so on that day, although Hank himself didn't race, his heart certainly did as he declared in his biggest dispatcher voice, On your mark, get set! Everyone tooted their loudest whistles, and Hank, Hank tooted the loudest of all. Well, I don't know about Hank, but I'm certainly going to take care of things right away next time. It's like my old granny always said, a stitch in time saves nine. There's a bigger patch. Thanks for visiting us all here in the Big Harbor. We'll see you again next time. Oh. 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 <laughs> well, I'm glad I got a bigger patch because... <laughs> <clears throat> I uh, think I'm gonna need it. He's a tugboat and a friendly tugboat too. A friendly tugboat too. Oh, Theodore likes to do the things that friendly tugboats do. Pushing and a pulling in the great big harbor in the great big world is so much fun. So many brand new things to discover. Waking with the sun, gotta get the job done. Oh, Theodore and Emily. Hank and George and the harbor master too.